If you're somebody who is looking to take your brand to the next level, to take your social media to that next level, to take your digital reputation to that next level, then this episode is definitely for you. Welcome or welcome back to the Bono's Real Estate Podcast. My name is Bo Bullard. I am your host. And today I have an incredible guest, Kat Torrey with Sirhant, who is also considered a brand architect, a brand building expert, joins me on the podcast. She shares with you all of her secrets, all of her tips for success that you need to develop an incredible digital brand, an incredible digital reputation that could take your business to the next level. Enjoy this episode. All right, guys, we are live. I am super pumped to have Kat Torrey here with us. I actually met Kat at San Francisco LFG event with Arjun and Ryan Surhan, and she was one of the speakers that I was actually blown away by. I was like, wow, what her and Candace are talking about, which Candace is her partner in crime, they'll get into that, I'm sure. But I was like, wow, this could help a lot of people. And so, Kat, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to chat with you today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Podcasting is so much fun. So I'm great to be here. On that point of podcasting, you guys have an amazing podcast. I feel extremely guilty. I haven't tuned in yet, but it's on the list. Mm -hmm. Um, Give that a quick shout out so I can blow it up on the screen so people can go check you out. Yeah, absolutely. And you're totally forgiven, Bo. I just appreciate the the opportunity to share it here. So my podcast is called Not Nice, Clever. So you can't mm-hmm. say you didn't know what you were signing up for when you listened <laughs> to it. Right. It is for the modern CEO and introverted leader. We talk about branding, marketing, money, and manifesting. So right if on. you're an introvert like me and you want help with those things, feel free to subscribe. Awesome. Cool. So everybody go tune in to those podcasts. I'll make sure that there's links and all sorts of things. So everybody has easy access to that. One of the things that I want to chat with you about, Kat, is Instagram lives um, for sure. But I want to talk about branding and I want to talk about what it is to get comfortable in front of the camera. And, you know, I was actually, I was with you. I was kind of an introvert, um, especially on camera. So like in person, shaking hands, doing that type of thing. I've always been an extrovert. I've always been pretty, pretty good at that. Very comfortable. But when I started getting on camera, I was super insecure about that. And I want to get into that because there are so many people in their entrepreneurial journeys that know they need to get on video, but they are so scared And I totally have empathy for that because I was that person and I'm sure you were there at one point. And so I want to dive into that. So um, that's actually a great way to start. But before we do, um, just kind of give give everybody a brief description on who you are, um, how you got started in branding and on social media, and just kind of give everybody that bio. Yeah, thanks. So my name is Kat Torrey, brand architect and voice expert. I work with modern entrepreneurs to build their brands on and offline, most notably with helping them define and embody their voice because the voice is such a differentiator. You're listening here on a podcast right now. You've got Bo's voice. You've got mine. It's just super powerful and intimate. And how I got started. So it started with me dropping out of nursing school. And moving cross country from Portland, Oregon, I'm from the West Coast, originally born and raised in the Bay, Mm -hmm. and moving to Miami to launch my first startup in the luxury landscaping space, which was an industry on paper I had no business whatsoever launching a business in, but I did it anyway, and it was super successful and fell in love with startups um, and continued growing, had my own agency built and sold that. And what I realized, and I don't know if Bo, if you've seen this too, I love marketing. I love communication. I love messaging. Um, But it's not the beginning of everything. The inception of anything is the brand. That is the soul. That is the heart. That is the thing that if you get that right, everything else will work itself out properly. So that is when I really started niching down just from marketing in general to branding specifically, hence brand architect. Okay. So brand you brought up. Talk Mm -hmm. about why brand is so important, but also talk about nobody's born just understanding that they need to understand brand and build a brand. Like, What was that transition point for you where you were like, wow, brand is really what it's all about. Brand is what I can leverage to, even though I haven't been in the business the longest, Mm -hmm. actually reach reach the most people in the most meaningful way. So how, what was that transition point for you? 
Yeah. So I was realizing, because I worked with a lot of business owners throughout the South Florida area when I was based in Miami. And I'm an excellent communicator. I'm an excellent copywriter, storyteller. Like Those are just natural talents that I have honed over thousands and thousands of hours of of practice. But what I realized is that I could have the best marketing campaign ever. But if the brand wasn't clear, if we didn't know who we were talking to, if we didn't know what values we stood for, if we didn't know what the personality was, we would be trying to cast such a wide net. And you were saying reach the most people. That's typical marketing mindset. But brand is about not reaching just the most people, but the right people. And going, I was having a conversation with Chris Doe earlier. He was on our podcast. We were recording for Not Nice Clever. And he was talking about how most people want to go a mile wide and an inch deep. That can be marketing, but branding Mm. is about going an inch wide and a mile deep Mm. so that you can really build those powerful relationships and build really that loyalty over time, which you can't buy. So you want to talk about having an edge over your competition? Do it in a way that leads with authenticity and you're building your brand in an authentic way that's building that emotional connection that will supersede logic. So even if somebody else has a better service, you know, your competitor, my competitor, they're not going to go with that other person because they've got the emotional connection through the branding with us. Does that make sense? That makes so much sense. Okay. So that's where a lot of people get lost also. So, right. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll, you'll agree with this. People get lost when it comes to, and maybe they just don't know. And that was me mm-hmm. for a long time. I'm actually like, I've been transitioning over the last couple of, of months, maybe of being like, okay, I, I, I like to fish. So I use fishing metaphors. And this is something that m- most people have heard of instead of trying to cast the widest net, which is what you were saying as far as instead of trying to go, you know, wide, a mile yeah. wide and an inch deep, you know, instead of casting the widest net, use a spear gun and mm-hmm. use a spear gun and go after that like marlin that you really want in the ocean. Instead of just trying to go cast the widest net and you may pick up a few fish here and there, but you're also going to pick up a lot of trash at the surface. And so mm-hmm. go deep into those waters and try to find the target that you really want, which is exactly what you were saying. So um, we talk about brand. You're talking mm-hmm. about brand and that it's and it's a game changer. Um, it sound, you're making it sound easy, right? Because you're, you're a professional out of You're the expert. Yeah. Where does one start? So if they're like, okay, I believe Kat, you know, she's, she has the credentials, like I believe her and I I need to start developing a brand right now. Mm -hmm. Where does one start? Like if they're hearing you talk right now and and they're going to go out and about during their day after this, and they have these thoughts in their mind, what is the thing that they should start doing today? Great question. So let me give you some like tactical next steps, right? And a couple different things, because the reason why brand can be so challenging for people to understand when they're starting out in their journeys is because it's so immersive. How do you find and and hold on to one tangible thing that you can focus on and execute on, right? That's that's the challenge. So if you are super new to this and you have no idea where to start, where I would start is actually similar to the workshop that we shared at LFG in San Francisco. Right. And just starting with something as simple as your brand pitch. And I'll give you three questions. So everybody listening here, wherever you're listening, if you're at the gym, if you are, you know, commuting to the office, you're doing laundry, doing the dishes, you're listening. These are three questions that I want you to think about. So I want you to answer them. So question number one is, who are you? Mm -hmm. And this seems so simple, but Bo, I cannot tell you how many times I've hopped on intensives with clients. I'm like, so who are you? And people fumble. They don't know how to articulate who they are, right? So when you ask, who are you? And then I want you to ask, who do you want to serve? Yes. Who 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 do you actually want to do business with? Don't, don't just say anybody because that's a way to maybe make some money, but it's not going to feel good. You're going to be burnt out and bitter and resentful. And I don't want that for anybody listening, right? Yes. So who do you want to serve? And then this is the most important probably question is how do you serve them? Mm. What's your unique vibe, your unique flavor? And I'll give you guys a cheat sheet listening in here. Typically, the person you are most qualified to serve is the person you used to be or the problems that you used to struggle with that are easy and common sense and second nature and muscle memory for you right now but yeah. you've forgotten that they're they're actually challenging to other people and people are willing to pay you good money to be able to solve that problem for them. That's super good. Okay, so where do you believe that most people fumble through that? Is it is it through the whole thing? Because when I asked you, introduce yourself to everybody, mm-hmm. give everybody a brief bio, 
it was it was exactly what you did in in San Francisco at LFG. It was just like boom, 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 super yeah. clear. A lot of times when people are asked to introduce themselves, they immediately think they're like, okay, my name is Bo. Right. Um, I, I do real estate marketing. I, I help these people, but they don't even really get that far. Mm-hmm. They're just like, this is my name, and this is who I'm with, and that's it. Like they go surface level with it, and it's not their right. fault. It's just that they haven't thought that deep or they haven't had a cat in their life telling them these are the questions that you need to have answered. So that way, when somebody asks you how you are different, boom, Mm -hmm. you're just going through. You're a brand architect. Like you said, like make it to where people are like, wow, this person is different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's where it's going to be really important for you to understand. And that third question, how do you do business? Everybody does business differently, right? Whether you are a real estate agent, a loan officer, a yoga instructor, I don't care. Like the qualifications on paper are the same. The difference, and this is where you can really bring bring and breathe life into your brand, is to understand your unique personality, your unique values. So I can tell you right now, Bo, I'm bold, I'm innovative, I'm dynamic, I'm magnetic, I'm unapologetic. That's why I have a podcast called Not Nice Clever. (laughs) My values that I stand for, that I fleshed out, that infuse all of my work, that inform the people that I say yes to, like you, I'm going to bring up something you said. You said, I have empathy for people who don't understand where to start when it comes to branding. One of my core values is empathy. Mm. Truly, that that's not a coincidence. There's a reason I said yes to this opportunity and why I say no to others. It's the filter with which I make all of my decisions. Right. And what that looks like for people curious about working with me is that they they hear the certainty, they hear the purposefulness in my voice, yes. the unapologeticness. People love people who know who they are. Oh, it for draws sure. you in like gravity. Yes. Right. And that was a conversation that I was having yesterday was people, they they love people, but they also, especially when they're getting ready to work with somebody, and it really doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if somebody's redoing your cabinets in your house or if they're going to take over your whole marketing plan in your business. You don't want the person, you want somebody that's confident in who they are and what they can offer you. Mm-hmm. And and people mis, misconstrue this idea of being cocky and arrogant yeah. Uh, being, and, and being confident. And our June Dingra talks about this a lot, where when somebody asks, like, why would somebody work with you over somebody else? And he mm-hmm. just straight up says, he's like, I'm the best at what I do. And he's not being cocky because he's not talking about his, his competition. He's just mm-hmm. talking about, like, I'm confident in what I can do. And a lot of times, like, people gravitate towards that because you don't want the, the real estate marketing expert that's just like, I'm all right. Like maybe my competition's better. I'm humble. I'm like doing this. People are like, mm, maybe there's somebody better. Mm-hmm. Like, so I feel like there's a really good, there's a, it's a really good opportunity for people to craft this, this idea that people have about them to be like, and they're confident about what they can do. Mm-hmm. They, they have empathy for the fact that not everybody knows how to do that, but yeah. they know their stuff. They know their stuff. And I feel like they can help me better than anybody else. And so yes. I feel like having that like elevator pitch <clears throat> about who you are and how you can help, like that has to be down. And I have to admit, like that for me needs that it needs some polishing. I need to work yeah. on it. And I, I I almost guarantee that a lot of people that are going to watch this, you, maybe you're in the same boat. And that is that 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 creates so much joy for me because I'm like, that means that you're going to get better from this. You're going to get yes. better from the fact that Kat just gave us some amazing advice. And so um, thank you for saying that. I was I was hoping that you would bring up those questions again because yeah. um, it really wasn't in like my mind to, to talk about, but I'm super pumped that you did. So thank you. My pleasure. You know, and this is something that I think a lot of people don't understand. They see amazing figures, incredible human beings like Arjun, like Ryan, like yourself, like myself. Mm-hmm. Um, that confidence the thing about confidence, the thing about motivation, the thing about branding, the thing about sales, the thing about anything in life is that it's an inside job first. Right. So oh. confidence is an inside job. Branding is an inside job, which is why it's so difficult to know where to start first, right? It's like trying to make sense of your mind. That's a just a maze of questions and thoughts and impressions and yeah. feelings and fears and all of these things. But if you can start inside Go inward, ask yourself those questions, reflect, write it down, get it out of your mind and onto paper. And I go through these these processes every couple years, I would say. Like I shared with you that the podcast is for the introverted leaders looking to create for a better tomorrow. Yeah. When I launched the podcast, we actually positioned the podcast to be for entrepreneurs looking to begin their entrepreneurial journey. Yes. 
Now we've elevated. We want to look for established entrepreneurs looking to make an impact and to create legacy. Right. right. And so you start inward. The marketing, the logos, the colors, the content, all of that is just the shiny hood of the car. Right. But the engine and the soul of everything, the driving force underneath it is the brand. Right. And that right there, I feel like, is one of the main common denominators as to why there are some people blowing up and their careers are really elevating mm-hmm. due to social media. So social media has 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 become this platform. I mean, it, and social media has been around. Yeah. Like it hasn't been around like that long. So, I mean, it's been around like 20, 30 years or whatever, but it hasn't been around like it is like in the, in the form that it is today, like that long. And so the fact that a person like you, a person like me, a person like somebody watching can just go from, from nothing to slowly developing this brand that makes a difference and makes an impact in people's lives over time is astonishing to me. And you don't have to have any money. You don't have to come from any no. kind of success. You can just say, look, I have something to say. Mm-hmm. Even, even if I'm an introvert and I, I don't necessarily like to, like I want to help people. I want to make a difference. It's amazing to me that the, the platforms that are available to us now are are available to us. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's... So, um, I'm sure we're going to bounce around topics and stuff, but I really want to talk about uh, a, a specific topic um, that I'm super curious in. So you did okay. a Instagram live challenge and I popped on to a lot of them. And like I was telling you before the podcast, it's very hard for me to get really engaged in Instagram lives. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about something that I want you to discuss with everybody um, about how significant and impactful Instagram lives could be for somebody's brand and some and their brand recognition online. So dive into that. Talk about why you started the Instagram live challenge for yourself and then what it meant for you and what you learned and what you could teach people. Yeah. So this is such a good question. I'm glad that you asked it. And here's here's where I'm coming at from it. I'm going to get into the specifics. Hustle is out. Heart is in, authenticity is in, values are in, community is in, being a human is back in, right? And leverage is the new black. Yeah. So the word leverage, I I say it like it's like the most amazing word in the world, but it's hard to understand. So, and I'm going to like tie this back and connect it to the live challenge. The ability to leverage other people, to leverage other resources, to either get more time back or make more money is the single, singularly most effective way to grow this day and age with all of the amazing resources, including social that we have at yeah. our disposal. Yeah. So the Instagram Live Challenge truly for me was about a couple things. It was about continuing to build my confidence because even somebody who speaks like I speak and speaks on stages and has podcasts and interviews people like Chris Doe and Ryan Serhant on my podcast, I still have days when I struggle with my confidence. Anybody who says that they don't is probably not being fully honest. And so this Instagram live challenge um, was incredible. Now, what I'll say to you, I'll give the caveat because if people are going to watch this podcast and they're going to go and they're going to watch my most recent lives, yeah. those, re- those lives are probably the 70th or 80th lives that I've done. Mm. If you've never gone live before, scroll back farther in my Instagram profile and you'll find the first live I ever did was in June of 2021. So mm. Right. So this most recent live challenge, Bo, that you engaged with was the third time I actually did it. Okay. I, I did it once in June of 2021. And then I did it again in January of 2023. And then I did it a third time in October of 2023. Okay. I share this evolution to ensure that anybody listening is not going to compare their live to the most recent live that I did. Cause I know comparisonitis is something that us perfectionist <laughs> entrepreneurs are so guilty of, myself included. But it really helped me two things, specifically with this most recent round. A, it helped me accelerate the ability to build trust online. The order of operations, how does brand make me money? Bo, have you heard that question before? Have you thought that question before? Right? They're like, Kat, this is like woo-woo. How does this actually put money in my bank? I'm like, stay with me here. Yep. Live video builds trust quicker than any other form of content out there. Edited video, for sure, like this podcast, it's going to be edited, it's going to be put up online, people are going to see it. Mm-hmm. Parasols as well, still photos, yes, but live video is unedited. It's uncut. What you see is what you get. And it is the quickest way to build trust online. And why do you want trust? So that you can build relationships because 
personal or professional, if you don't have trust in a relationship, you actually don't have a relationship um, or you have something that's really toxic, which we don't have to get into that on this <laughs> podcast. And then if you have relationships, you'll have business. You'll have people saying your name in the room. You'll have people referring you to business. You'll have people trusting you so much that they're going to trust you with their hard-earned money, their biggest assets ever, and trust you to facilitate a transformation and solve a problem. So it goes trust, relationships, business. Live video builds trust super quick. If you want a quote-unquote shortcut, I'm not necessarily a fan of that word, live video is it. And then here's the other thing that I loved, and you had mentioned this. You loved my, my final video that I did on day 30. I broke down what leverage looks like. So I'll give you the quick calculus and and kind of sneak peek of what I went into, but then you can go and listen to the, the full breakdown after this podcast. Yes. Over the course of 30 days, I went live 27 times for an average of 13 minutes, which equated to about six hours of my time, right? Yeah. Yes. So six hours of my time over 30 days. I'm very ruthless with my time and I'm always finding ways to get it back because it's the one resource I can't make more of. And, and if you're a human, you can't make more of. If you do figure that out, please tell me and I'll pay you whatever yeah, it takes to figure that out, right? <laughs> or anybody would. So I went live, right? And it took six hours of my time over 30 days. Yeah. And over the course of that time, all of my live videos amassed almost 6,000 views. Mm. And because it's live, Bo, when you hopped on, I called you out. I said, hey, Bo, how are you? Where are you joining from? It's great to see you. Yeah. Or when you know clients like Tiffany or Leslie or Paul would help and be like, hey, Paul, great to see you again. We had our session earlier this week. I'm talking about X, Y, Z today. Yeah. The nature of live, intimate nature of it, similar to podcasting, makes you feel like you're having a conversation with the person. So what this looks like on paper is that I invested six hours of my time over 30 days to have 6,000 conversations. Mm. Now... Let's contrast that with the old school traditional way. And I'm not using those words in a, in a way to say it's bad. It's just no. simply different, yeah. right? We're talking about leverage as a new black, right? So if I were to call 6,000 people, it would have taken me 27 days, hundreds of hours. And I believe 600 hours was the total it would have taken. Mm. Six hours to have 6,000 conversations via live video or 600 hours Mm -hmm. to have 6,000 individual phone conversations with an average of six to seven minutes because that's about how long it takes to make a cold call. Wow. wow. Yeah. Which do you think is a more pleasurable experience for people <laughs> listening here? I can just see your face. You're like 6,000 oh. phone calls. Oh, yeah. Forget it'd be that. Yeah, it'd be brutal. And so here's what that looks like, right? You're you're getting your time back. I 100 x my time. Mm. And- for those of you asking like, okay, but where, where's where's the catch? Where's the hook? I booked three speaking engagements. I didn't even pitch myself. I, You know how people are talking about like booking appointments, booking consults to try to sell people sales calls, all that. Yeah. I don't do sales calls. Mm -hmm. I have it on my calendar. If you want to talk to me about hiring me to, to speak or do a workshop, cool. I had people coming to me. Yeah, I had people coming to me leading women's groups. I had people coming to me leading entrepreneur organizations. Yeah. And I didn't have to pitch myself. My pitch was me just being myself and showing up and investing those six hours. And for what I charge for a speaking engagement, the ROI is there, hand yeah. over fist, right? Okay. Amazing information. I'm just like, the whole time I'm just like, preach, preach, you know, because <laughs> all of this, it's so amazing information. And it's just, when you break it down like that, it just makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Now let's break it. Now let's go deeper with it. So- <clears throat> let's say somebody, Susie, mm -hmm. starts going live on Instagram where she has gone live three times before listening to what you just said. And she's just like, Kat, you just, you don't understand. I don't have as many followers as you. Mm, I yes. don't, I don't have the, the account that you do. I don't have, like, I've never spoken at an event like you have. Mm -hmm. I don't have the connections that you have. All all the excuses that I, that we should have empathy for. But yeah. Susie here doesn't believe that that lives could be effective for her because the three times that she did it before listening to you, mm -hmm. nobody joined. Absolutely nobody joined. It was ghosts. She was talking to nobody. Talk to Susie. Right. All right, Susie. Well, for one thing, I'll say I've been there. Mm -hmm. I have had all those same thoughts. I have had all those same fears. It's funny. I'm not a parent yet. But I know when I do become a parent and I have a kid and they're going to want to learn new things and try new things, they're not going to be afraid of failure. They're just going to try and learn and 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 fail forward, right? Kids are so amazing in that way. And yet, 
as adults, we lose that sense of adventure and curiosity. We don't want to fail as an adult. We don't want to be seen as a beginner as an adult. And now you have, as you mentioned, the advent of social media where you're failing in front of a lot of people on a public platform. So Susie, what I'll say this is that following does not equate to fame. It does not equate to more money in your bank account. If you want to grow and you want to have it have an impact on your business, you want an engaged audience. You want relationships. It's called social media, not follower media, not fame mm-hmm. media, for however you might think of it, right? Because of, you know, reality TV and stars like the Kardashians and right. just all of that, right? Right. But Susie, you only need a few people at first to trust you and to believe in you and to say your name. And when I was you, Susie, on day three in June of 2021, I had just turned 30 and I was like, F it. I need to do something different. I'm bored in my content. I've plateaued in my business. I'm not enjoying it. How do I shake it up? Why don't I push myself to the edge of my growth zone and go live? And so, Susie, the first time I went live, nobody joined, FYI. Yeah. You you can probably scroll back. You have to go back pretty far because that was about two and a half years ago. Yeah. And then the second time I went live, one or two people joined. And then it was a little bit more and a little bit more. So let me tell you, if you have a very small following and only a handful of people are joining, you're exactly where you're supposed to be on yeah. day three. Yes. And, and know that I wouldn't have the platform I have or the business that I have if I hadn't held the faith and kept on going mm-hmm. to the point where now I can go live at the drop of a hat and know how to pivot and know how to improv and how to communicate. Yeah. This takes practice, you know? Okay. Susie is a realtor and okay. Susie's like, okay, all right. That makes sense, Cal. Like I, I, I get that. I understand you try new things. I understand mm-hmm. that zero will eventually be one. One yeah. will lead to three. Three will lead to five. But what if, Cat, Susie's sitting there and is like, I, I just don't know what to say. Like, I'm going to go on to live Mm -hmm. And I I have a boring life. Like I don't have pets. I don't have kids. I don't have family. I just am a realtor in a small town or I'm a realtor in the city. Nobody knows me. Nobody cares about me. I'm boring. I don't know what to say, Kat. Yep. So Susie, what I'll say is language is powerful in shaping your mindset and creating opportunities for you. And if all you're doing is telling yourself that all those things are true, that's all that's ever going to be true about you. Yeah. So I would first challenge and and take a hard look at that self-talk that you've got going on in your head. I had the same self-talk. I've got negative, um, judgy voices that crap that crop up over time and then I stamp them out and I remember and I remind myself who the fuck I am. Oh, sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this podcast. You're good. You're good. Okay, good. Yeah. And then here's what I'll say. If you don't know what to say, I want you in the first few lives, let's call the first 20 lives, to pretend like you're talking to your best friend. So Susie, I'm going to pretend like I know who you are and I'm going to say, um, Corey, Corey's your best friend. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at that camera like you're talking to Corey. Yeah. And I guarantee you, your body's going to relax. Your jaw's going to unclench. Your shoulders are going to relax. And you'll be like, oh, I know how to talk to Corey because if you know who you're talking to, you know exactly what to say. Right. You're just thinking you're talking to a piece of technology. You're not. Pretend like you're talking to Corey. Right. It'll be cool. You know, and one thing that I heard on that same live that you were breaking down the numbers and everything was, you know, a lot of times people will think that when they make a piece of content for social media, for Instagram, for TikTok, for YouTube, whatever it is, yeah, they just, they go to this place of, wow, I'm, I'm going to, I'm talking to so many people. Yeah. And even though that is true and everybody's scale of a lot is different, like Ryan Serhant's is going to be millions and millions of people. Yeah. You know, Susie's may be 10, 15, 20 people, yeah. which is which is amazing that you can talk to that many people at once. The right. one, that, one thing that you were talking about that was really, really good was it's important to understand that you are going to talk to a lot of people, but at the end of the day, you're talking to one. Yes. And because when that person's sitting here like this, you know, scrolling at night before they go to bed and Kat shows up or Susie shows up, there's not a lot of people. It's just that one person sitting in, in their bed. And right. that was that is so impactful and significant during this conversation because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a difference. We're trying to impact people's lives. And mm-hmm. we do that one at a time. And yes. the, the nice thing is, is that like what we talked about, social media allows for us to do that at scale, mm-hmm. but we should always remember, we should always come back to the fact that 
it's one at a time. We're talking to we're talking to Corey, then we're talking to Candace, then we're talking to Ryan, then we're talking to Arjun, one at a time. Instead mm-hmm. of thinking like, wow, you know, we can get into like nitty gritty tips. Like instead of saying, hey, what's up, you guys? You know, on right. stories like <clears throat> say you because you're talking to just that one person on the other end. And right. I feel like that's super powerful. But to your point on your last live, that is so significant. Yeah, it's remembering that you're not out here creating this content and putting yourself out there just for your own sake to hear your own voice, right? Right. You're doing right. it to connect with people, to connect right. with a human being, a human right. being that has values, that has traumas, that has triggers, that has fears, that is struggling with problems that you hold the solution to. Right. And by you not putting yourself out there and giving yourself the opportunity to connect with this person, there's somebody out there that's struggling with a problem that yes. you could solve. Yes. But you're not willing to make yourself temporarily uncomfortable yes. to help facilitate that transformation that could change somebody's life. Yes. You know, that's a super good point. Um, I, w- I can't remember who was talking about it, but somebody was talking about that e- that exact point of they were discussing how they were getting really good engagement, right? There would be a bunch of people commenting on their pictures and on their reels on Instagram and all these different things. And then it just died. And they were like, what am I doing wrong? Did I did I say something that just shut everybody off or, or what did I do? And then he was started telling this story that he was at a he was at a some meeting or or he was out in public and a few people like a handful of people actually came up to him and said i've been watching your content every week and it's just like what you said about this topic meant so much and it resonated so much with me and he was like wow the the vanity metrics on social media mean nothing oh, bo let me and, tell you i okay thank you for opening up this like rabbit hole here i cannot tell you how many clients I have worked with that have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, there was even one that had 1.2 million followers that had no idea how to monetize and galvanize their audiences. They had no freaking clue. And at the end of the day, like it's it's not about the 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 quantity of it, right? It's about remembering to keep it personal and to go one by one by one by one. Right? You're you're not going to conquer and and write a chapter 20 before you've had a prologue. You got to write the prologue, write the chapter 1, write the chapter 2 and go one by one and know that that those top line following it it means nothing. There might be some correlation but there's no causation. And then the other thing that I want to say about that is that when I audit my content because I audit my content across all my channels on a monthly and a quarterly basis. Okay. And then I ask the people who hire me to speak, the clients who ask me to consult with them and hire me to consult with them, I ask them, what was it that was the tipping point? What convinced you to finally hire me? And the trend that I have found is that it's the content that at the surface level has the least amount of likes, maybe even no comments. Oh, wow. They were like, they were like, Kat, that post hit me in the gut. And I knew you were the person I had to work with. And one of those pieces of content, I'll use an example because I know you love like specifics here. Yeah. It was a post that said, you don't have a content problem. You have an identity problem. Did not do very well on the surface level, but that got me booked. That made me eight or nine grand, like in the course of a few weeks after that came out. But nobody commented on it. Like... Don't be afraid of, of of not having those top line metrics at first. Audit, see where the business is actually coming from and what live people are giving you feedback on, right? Yes. Okay. And so I, I am. I'm very specific about things and I want to I don't want to get deep. Yeah. So y- y- somebody reached out about that post, which is which is powerful. Um, about the identity problem. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just trying to think because that's so powerful for people including myself, including everybody that may be listening, that is something that should hit home for everyone because of this. <clears throat> the deepness of certain content that you put out could resonate with somebody way more than that easy thing to put clapping emojis on or just mm-hmm. put a quick comment up because they don't really have to think about it. But when somebody right. has to think about it, I would rather have no comments but everybody thinks so intently about what I just said that they forget to comment. That's, I mean, that is the psychological factor that everybody forgets or doesn't even realize exists. 
Like, what about the fact that maybe your content is hitting home so intently for people that they just they just kind of went from being on social media to being in their own head like that because of what you just said. Yeah, and I'm the voice in their head now. You yes. you you will hire me. I don't know what that's going to look like. You're gonna you're gonna refer me some business because yes. you don't want to admit that maybe you need the help first, but you see somebody else have that same content identity crisis. Yes. Or you're going to want to hire me or you're going to be like, okay, I need Kat to say that in person because in-person energy is just the chef's kiss, right? Okay. And I need her to say it to all of my team because I see all of my team struggling and having an identity crisis and their their production, their volume, their sales are suffering because of it because they're so terrified to even take action. Right. I want to be in their head. I want to be in your head. I want you to feel like I know you better than you know yourself so that you know that I can help you with whatever it is that you're struggling with. I don't care yes. about the likes. I don't care about the comments. Now, if my business starts to suffer, if if I'm not generating sales, if I'm not increasing the lifetime value of my customers and my clients, then maybe I'll look at my content. Yes. But those numbers don't lie, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I want to pivot. Um, yeah. Into something that we've kind of been talking about already, but I want to go deeper with it. Okay. So you kind of explained the fact that you, you were kind of an introvert, maybe still are an introvert, but you got- yeah. You got comfortable with the things that made you uncomfortable mm-hmm. and it's really paid off for you, obviously. The one thing that I'm curious about, and you talked a little bit about this in San Francisco at LFG, public speaking, having speaking engagements, doing different things. I'm super curious about this because I've actually been asked on a on a lower level, but I've actually been asked to to go to speaking and be like keynote speaker at- Amazing. Um, it's really, really cool. But I want to, I want to ask you something that's on this, on, along these lines. Did you expect that? Like, did you see that coming along your journey? Was it a goal of yours to be like, wow, I, I don't know like what brand is, but I really want to be in front of a lot of people. I want to be yeah. talking to them on a big stage. Or is that something that evolved due to the fact that you got comfortable with the things that made you uncomfortable? And then all these opportunities started popping up. Yeah, it was definitely an evolution. All, all I wanted to do when I wanted to make the pivot from being and running a creative marketing agency to being a brand expert, a brand consultant, yeah. was a med spa in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And it was run by this family and they were incredible. They had amazing values. They were amazing people. They had a good product, but they were in the midst of an identity crisis. Yeah. And my pivot to brand, I can, I can trace it to the genesis of that one client. I just wanted to help one person. That's mm-hmm. That that's where I started. Everybody sees if you go on my LinkedIn, if you go on my Instagram, you go on my website. By the way, you don't need a website to make six or seven figures. I'll just like bring that caveat. It's a nice thing to have. It's not a must have. Right. They see all this and they think that like I just popped out of the womb <laughs> with all of this information. Right. But I wasn't. Yeah, right, right. I I wanted to start by helping one person. And then yeah. the evolution of understanding leverage came over time, came from me practicing and banging my head against the wall when when I plateaued in my business because I was only doing one-to-one activities because I was a solopreneur and didn't have a team to support me. I have a team of four people that support me. I don't, all that stuff that you see, I inform it, I infuse it with my voice and my values, but I have a team to support me on the execution. Right. And so in the same way that I look at going live for 30 days to invest six hours of my time to have 6,000 conversations, yeah. you asked, you know, I'm an introvert. I This is just how I am. It's how I'm wired. It's my energy. So I need to understand how to use it to my advantage instead of like we had what we had over 100 people at LFG, right? Probably close to 200. Yep. The workshop I did was 45 minutes. Yep. I went there and I spoke for 45 minutes with Candice and I impacted over almost 200 people. Right. If I had tried to do 200 individual 30 minute brand consults, yes, bro, my energy would be in the negative <laughs> for sure. It'd be like negative 87 percent, right? <laughs> and energy is one yeah. of my greatest assets. Next to time, yes. time and energy are the two greatest assets as an entrepreneur you can ever protect and be relentless about wanting to get more of and, and regenerate. Right. You know, I've had a I've had a similar evolution over just my short time of doing this because I've only committed to social and content creation and building a brand. I've only been doing it for like three years. And okay. so I've really, I've really tried Wait, to like- Bo, can I, can I just stop you right there? Yeah. Because you've only committed to it for three years. I want everybody listening to pay attention to that because I feel like people want to see results after three months. 
yeah, or Su- Susie who wants to see results after three lives. I'm like, Susie, right. come talk to me in three years. So anyway, I, just, I had to like acknowledge and hype you up about that because that's well, amazing. It's, it's true, right? And and, it's, yeah. and and I went through these points of time where I was like, like Susie, I was like, man, I've been doing this for three months, right? And nobody wants to work with me or mm-hmm. I'm not getting the the engagement that I want to get or nobody's, you know, the, the pivoting point for me was when people started talking about my content in person. So yes. like when I would go to an event, like when I would go to a mixer or a networking event, and then I was started, and then when I went, even when I went to LFG, like I had yeah. people that I did not know saying, "Hey, I recognize you from TikTok. Like we follow each other on TikTok. Like that is so amazing that you can right? reach people on a whole new level to where you, when you see them in person, boom, you automatically have a connection, which is really cool. But it's interesting for me because I started doing this brand thing. I've been doing it for three years, so not long at all. But I've started to see like, okay." People are are noticing me because of the social that create opportunities. Mm-hmm. And the first time I did a public speaking, like I was a keynote speaker at a title sales event in Reno. Okay. And that was like my first like big one. It was like three twenty five people. Okay. And it was it was like a bigger one, right? And so for for not doing that that often, like I did smaller ones, like 100, 50, 75, stuff like that. Yeah. But like three hundred people is a lot. And so I was like, this is this is intense. What I <laughs> what I discovered when I went to that event, event because I'm in the title industry, I have I own a digital marketing agency, but I'm I'm known more for my personal brand in the title real estate space. Yeah. When I went to that, there were so many people from across the country that were coming up. I didn't know, but they knew me, and what they were saying to me about how I've affected their business in their title career the same word kept coming up over and over and over again, which was I've inspired them to do something, which this yes. is not a, this is not a boast about bow session. I'm trying to like help people understand that your content can help inspire people to actually take action and then help their business, help their family, help their future. And it's such a selfish feeling, right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, that's such a selfish feeling. Like I want to chase that. I want to chase helping people so much that it affects their lives that they can look back and be like, wow, I followed Bo for for a year, for six months. And if he's able to do it, I feel like I'm able to do it. And to give you that inspiration to actually go and have vision and have hope for their for their career and for their futures, that's amazing. I don't think it's selfish at all if it's truly <laughs> your purpose. And seeing you light up and smile and talk about it, like it it it's oozing out of you. You would do it. This is how you know. If you guys want a gut check, if you're feeling burnt out, this is the holidays. Holidays are rough. I, I pulled my audience, um, you know, at the time of this recording, uh, I pulled my audience about what type of content they wanted, and everybody hand over fist was like, "Mindset, I need help right now." I'm like, "Woof, holidays are rough." I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, right. But so if you're feeling that, right? If you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling stalled, just like checked out, not engaged, like ask yourself if what you're doing right now, would you do that even if you weren't getting paid to do it? That's. <laughs> if the answer is no, probably why your sales are suffering. And again, I know how counterintuitive that is. And I know like you think like, okay, Kat, you're where you're at. I had to pivot. I was in nursing school. Yeah. I was not going to be a nurse, even if they were paying me $150,000, $200,000 to be a flight nurse and all the chaos and adrenaline of that. Yeah. I had to drop out. It was a no. If yeah. it's not a full body, yes. Yes. Probably a no. Right. You know, that's so refreshing. Like it, it makes me like take a deep breath and it's just like, wow, that's so, it, it's just so refreshing because at the end of the day, you know, you can, you can hear all the cliche sayings of like, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. There are going to be days where they just suck. Like it just yeah. sucks to like talk to those people or have those conversations or, or whatever. But for the most part, if you just know for a pa- if you just know for a fact that you are living your passion and if and some people's passion may not be helping people they could just be like i, I don't really care about other people i care about like counting numbers so i'm going to be an accountant and they're talking right, to anybody, right? do your if thing if that's correct for them i want that for them i don't want you to try to help people if you don't want to do it please don't try please for sure do not <laughs> but for the audience of this podcast it's mm-hmm. going to be the entrepreneur. It's going to be the realtor that wants to level up. It's going to be the lender that is just like, I'm tired of living my life with no purpose and just trying to close loans and just trying to chase buyers around, especially in a market climate like this, where interest mm-hmm. rates are super unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. You don't even know what's going to happen next week. So 
if you're not living your life in a way where I've had this pivotal transition in my career where I'm like, wow, I have never gotten a better feeling from when somebody in my market or at an event in Reno come up to me and are like, I was in this place of darkness where I was just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to continue and not like on that deep of a level, but like on a level of like, I don't know which direction to go to. Yeah. Crossroads. They're just at a crossroads. I I don't know what I'm doing right now is not working. Mm -hmm. And then they, then they see somebody like me. They see somebody like you that smile and provide positive reinforcing information of like, you got this, but you have to take action. That's where Mm -hmm. I feel like we can do the raw, raw thing all the time. And I, and I love that. Yeah. For the person on the other end watching this, it is your job to take what Kat is saying and take action and go do it. Like mm-hmm. for the people that are like, I don't know what to talk about. You're listening to this podcast. Kat is dropping some fire nuggets. I would go after this podcast, go on a live and say, I was just listening to Kat Tori talk mm-hmm. about lives and about mindset. I want to know what what you think right? Mm-hmm. On on your live. So there's so many different ways to do it. And I just think that it's, I think it's a mindset thing, which is what you were discussing. It's, and it all starts with mindset. 100%. And, and yes. that's what I loved about LFG and San Fran. Yes. That was a mindset like- It was. Bonkers. That was yes. bonkers. I, the, the, I have like a, a mini bone to pick with like the self-help and personal development content and world- You can't sell motivation. I can't do anything to motivate you. Nothing that comes out of my mouth is going to motivate you. But what it is going to do is it's going to plant a seed. It's going to make you ask yourself a question. And then it's going to unlock something that's remained stagnant and hidden in a corner in your mind. And you're going to look at something differently. You're going to reframe. You're going to, you're going to change your self-talk and then you're going to, Pay attention to where you're interested, where you're passionate, where your energy is. Right. Motivation's intrinsic. Anybody who tells you that you can, that you can pay them to like motivate you, no. That's called like classic discipline, and that doesn't work over time. Like shame and guilt and discipline don't change human behavior. That's what the performance science case studies show. Right. But if you sit with it, as uncomfortable as it can be, you answer those three questions that I shared earlier. You sit with the, what Bo is putting out there and how he's challenging you to look at things differently, to think differently. Yeah, that's where it can start. Right. I feel like the things that you're talking about, and we discussed it before, of just try things. You yeah. know, like that was something big that I've talked about with Arjun a lot as well. Like. If you don't know where to start, just try stuff. I mean, there's so much inspiration. So not like inspiration on like, oh, so inspiring. There's just so much inspiration. Like you can just log on to Instagram, follow Kat, go to her followers, see who she's following. Go check exactly. out those. Birds of a feather, right? And also the other like quick, easy hack that I love, and this is really powerful. I've, I've, I've researched this for introverts specifically because they're so in tune to their energy and protective of it is literally just play a fucking hype song. Get some music going, move your body, go outside, stop sitting in, sitting in your room, doom scrolling on your phone or sitting at your desk, staring at an empty inbox. Like don't, that's not going to help you. I get your body moving, get your body moving. I love like the hype song. Like it's, it's so small, Yeah, but it it does come down to the fact, like I'm, I really big on like the old gangster movies. So I use, I love that. I use like gangster references a lot, which I'm so not a gangster, but like I, I you're love, a brand like, the, gangster, Bo. I'm a brand gangster. Come on now. Um, there you go. You know, but, the new like, line on uh, your bio for 2024. <laughs> let's go. But like the old Godfather movies, you know, and that like mm-hmm. Don Carleone music, and it's just like, and so now they have like those remixes of old gangster music. I like, love remixes. With some, so like, good. Pop in and stuff, and I'm like, Phew. like I feel like I can do anything. So, but. That is a small like tip for something that could ch- literally change the direction of your life. So yes, like listening to a small hype song may sound small, but it's something that should trigger something in your brain where you're like, man, I, I went from thinking I'm a nobody to I'm still a nobody, but I can become a somebody like mm-hmm. that is up to me. And I just love that. Like that is, that's why I come from a super small town in Arizona. Mm. and I was deathly afraid of social media. I was deathly afraid of video, and yeah. I just started, like I've told this story a million times, but the way I started was I was like, I'd be in my car, and I'd be like, 
All right, guys. Um, question of the day. Do you prefer, what's your favorite color? Or do you prefer dogs or cats? Mm -hmm. And it was the cringiest, stupidest thing I've ever done. But I keep those up and I go back and I watch them because I was like, man, in three years, that's what I was doing to start. Now I'm doing more things, interviewing awesome podcast podcast guests to get really great content. But I had to do those cringy, stupid things to start. Yeah. And I started or being like, Right. Or you, or you wouldn't have had the opportunity to do the things you are now. Like you, you love right. old gangster movies. I love Rocky. Like oh. everybody, I don't care what culture you're from. I don't care what language you speak. People yes. love an underdog. For sure. And I want everybody listening, like start to be your own underdog. Start yes. there with the cringy. What's your favorite color? Guys, my first live I ever did, it's it's on my Instagram. It's it's public knowledge. You can even, I even mm -hmm. allow people to download my reels because if they want to remix or do whatever they want with it. All I yeah. said on my first live was, I was like, hey guys, I didn't actually tell anybody I was going live. I said that on live. I'm like, I told nobody I was going live and yet I still went live. Like, yeah. and now you see me, I can go live for over half an hour by myself and for I sure. always have something to say. Yes. Be your own underdog. Start there. Yes. This was super refreshing. It was really, really great to have this conversation with you. I I, I want to do a part two. And I didn't think about oh. this, but I want to do a part two that dives deep on relationships. And I know that we we're talking about that, but it's important to talk about being aware of the toxic relationships in your life that are holding Ooh. you back. I, I'm a big believer on this ideology of, you're around five losers, you're going to become the sixth loser. If you're around five successful winner gangsters, you're going to become the sixth. Mm -hmm. And I just love that. So I think that if you're up for it, we do a part two, we talk about relationships and what's it like, how to, how to sniff out those toxic relationships. That right. Are what are, what are the signs and symptoms to look for? I, I mean, you could have not picked a better topic. I have quite the story of how Kat looked in 2018 that I can share, which is literally just five years ago. Yeah. Just five years ago. Right. And I'm, that's- I'm game. Okay. We're going to do it. And it's really important. So it's a cliffhanger, this one, because I feel like it's really important from the stories that I've been told, you know, the the people holding you back, the people who are like, oh, cat, don't do that. That you're you look silly. You're crazy. This. You're yeah. crazy. Like you, this. What are you trying to do? Be an influencer? Like right? You no. Know, when somebody's just getting started, that stings. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that person may be your spouse. That person may be your own kids. That person may be your mom or dad. And yeah. you can't just like cut those relationships off forever, but there are ways to separate yourselves mm -hmm. from those people and say, Hey, look, you know, I, I love you. I appreciate you. Um, but I'm going to do my thing. Like, I believe in this. I believe in what I'm doing is going to help and impact people. You can stay back and hide in your living room mm -hmm. and not do anything to help people's lives, but I want to. And so if you want to insult me for doing that, then, then th that's you know, your opinion. Yeah, then that's so on you. It sounds like a you problem. It's not a me problem. I'm not going to carry that. It doesn't belong to me. Yes. So return so, to sender. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do a part two, but I, I want to emphasize how grateful I am for you doing this one. Um, you know, there were so many things that I wanted to talk about that we we talked about, but I'm really glad that we went beyond that and talked about things that I didn't have planned because yeah. they're they're real things that people are dealing with. And they're real things that people need to need to have in their minds. Um, and so I think you're going to help a ton of people um, and you've helped me a lot. So I appreciate you. I know your time is super valuable. So thank you for doing this. Um, and any last any last words for everybody? No, it's um, reflecting the gratitude right back to you, Bo. It's it's incredible to be able to get to do this kind of work. And I want to know anybody listening, I'm I'm an open door. I'm an open book. Uh, feel free to DM me or send me an email. Um, I never assume I'm I'm not impacting someone. So any opportunity I can and to, to hype you up and to remember, like help you remember who you are, I'm yes. there for it. So thank you. Absolutely. For you watching, you know how much I appreciate you tuning into this. Kat absolutely blew it away. So go give her some love. Reach out to her. Send her a DM. Ask her questions. Or just say thank you for the advice that she shared today. Um, so whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening on Spotify, I really, really appreciate you. And stay tuned for part two. See ya. Can't wait.